Hi everybody, welcome to Sony IS and welcome back to the worksheet discussion of the Environment Prelims Crash Course 2023. Today we are going to do topic number 7, okay? And those of you who want to join the crash course may do so. There's a link provided. You may quickly register and you can access all the lectures, right, alongside. So we are going to start topic number 7. Topic number 7 is very important. Basically, we are discussing climate change, okay? And to understand this, you can refer chapter number 17, okay, and chapter number 18 from the notes which are provided to you. So we'll now start one by one. Question number one, possible impacts of global warming. Okay, melting of ice cap, this is very obvious. Increase in plankton production. Planktons you already know, are you have phytoplanktons and you have zooplanktons. Now what would happen? Let's say because of global warming, the temperature is increasing. There is ocean acidification, etc. So the population of these plankton species should decrease or decline, isn't it? Okay. The population of this is not going to increase. This is very obvious. You can eliminate two. Okay. You eliminate two. You're left with three or at least one and three and one, three and four. So melting of ice cap. Yes, this is going to happen. Okay. Then vanishing of animal populations. Yes, this will also happen primarily because these animals are cold blooded which means even if there is a slight increase or change in the temperatures overall, they would vanish and which is why we also talk of the mass extinctions and basically the recent one, sixth mass extinction. Okay, so yes, vanishing of animal population will happen and spread of this disease are specifically malaria, right? So these diseases, etc. will also happen because new regions will become more warmer and then this can also spread, all right? So here the answer will be question number one, one, three and four. Okay. Next question is on Rio plus 20 summit. Okay. So Rio summit happened in the year 1992. Okay. Followed by Rio plus 10. By the way, Rio summit happened in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Rio plus 10. This happened in basically South Africa and then Rio plus 20 again happened in Brazil. Okay. It is a conference of IPCC. No, it is not. Okay. We read this basically when we talk about the different Rio conventions. Okay. So this is of course not related to IPCC. This is wrong. Second, it focuses on how to build a green economy. Now green economy was one of the focus objectives of Rio plus 20 summit. Okay. Which talks about sustainable development and lifting the people out of poverty. So yes, this is correct. So question number two, the answer is going to be B, okay, two only, all right. Now question three, first of all, we have to arrange the greenhouse gases in the increasing order, okay, of their persistent time. So for how so long are they going to be present, we are going to arrange, all right. So you have nitrous oxides, perfluorocarbons, methane and hydrofluorocarbons, okay. So here, basically, you have to arrange them basically, right. So by the way, when we're talking of greenhouse gases, know one thing that methane is a short-lived climate pollutant, okay? That methane is going to be present for a very small time comparatively, right? Now, I'll just show you the table as well. So, let's say if the carbon dioxide is going to exist or be there for 100 odd years, methane is only roughly be available for 12 years, nitrous oxide, 120 years, okay, hydrofluorocarbons have a bigger range, then perfluorocarbons and last is sulfur hexafluoride, okay. So here you can also arrange, so if you know that out of these, methane is actually a short-lived climate pollutant, then your job becomes easy, you have to choose between these, okay, that you have to choose between, uh, let's say 3 and 1, of course, is common here, so perfluorocarbons and hydrofluorocarbons, okay. So here, as you can also see, perfluorocarbons compared with hydrofluorocarbons are going to be like they would exist for a longer period of time. All right. So here then for question this, you can arrange the answer as 3, 1, 4, 2. All right. Now one question I have, we have already covered this in the crash course. I just now tell me what are the top three country wise tell me the top three emitters of greenhouse gases. 
Okay, you can type that in the comment section. Top three emitters of greenhouse gases globally. Okay. Next question is on agenda 21. Okay, again, very important. So see what happened. Rio summit 1992. We had the forest principles. We had agenda 21. Okay. Agenda 21, of course, talks about the principles for sustainable development in the 21st century. Okay. It is an outcome of Earth Summit at Rio de Janeiro in the year 1992. All these things are correct. Earth Summit correct. Location also correct. Year also correct. One is right. It is a global plan for this should be sustainable development. So yes, this is also true. It talks about sustainable development overall. Okay. So yes. It is legally binding in nature. No, it is not legally binding in nature. Okay. Because it's an agenda overall, so it cannot be legally binding overall, right? So this is, of course, not legally binding. Okay, so this is the answer for question number four is one and two only. Right, now we move to question number five, climate forcings, right? Two statements. First is almost defining it, what is it talking about? And second is an application part of it, okay? So these are the factors in the climate system which either increase or decrease the effects to the climate system, okay? So basically, let's say this is the sun, this is the earth. Some of these portions, the incoming solar radiation, etc., is going to warm the earth and there will be outgoing radiations. In between, you will have clouds, you will have aerosol particles, etc. So we're talking of the overall balance, okay? Either the increase or the decrease of the effects on this, on the climate system. Overall, we talk this overall as the climate forcings, okay? So basically, the balance of energy, okay, overall entering the part which is entering and leaving the earth that is one thing that we need to know okay now positive forcings one keyword is there and one is negative so before i tell you what it does you should know what is the example of it so positive and by the way here positive forcings usually you would think positive so maybe it is something good okay but it's actually the opposite positive forcings talks about excess let's say greenhouse gases Greenhouse gases, what would they do? They would simply increase the temperature. Okay. So positive green forcings or the greenhouse gases would actually warm the earth and not cool the earth. This is wrong. Example of negative forcings. So here we will have things which actually cool down the earth. Okay. So here you can have, you can think of aerosols. Okay. Because of more reflectivity, etc. So they actually cool down the earth. So statement two is wrong. Whereas statement one is correct, the answer is going to be one only. Question number five. Okay. Next question is on National Adaptation Fund on Climate Change. So it's a three statement question. So let us examine it. Number one, central sector scheme. Okay. With NABARD as its national implementing entity. Okay. So yes, it is central sector scheme. Okay. With NABARD as the entity, this is absolutely correct. Okay. It prepares and updates climate scenarios. Okay. Assesses vulnerability and the climate impact. This is true. This is something which you can also understand from the name also. Okay. Now the third statement, it aims to meet prescribed annual ambient air quality standards. So first of all, air quality at all the locations in the country. Okay. So this is not correct. Okay. This basically is a statement, of course, not related to this National Adaptation Fund, but this is related to National Clean Air Program, which talks about meeting the ambient air quality standards at all the locations in the country, okay, in an overall stipulated time frame. So that is National Clean Air Program, okay, that is a separate program which had the base year as 2017, okay. And in that 20 to 30 percent reductions had to happen in the particulate matter emissions, okay, by the year 2024. And by the way, even this has been updated. So now they talk about 40 percent reduction, okay, by the year 2026. So overall, that is a separate thing. So National Adaptation Fund is different. These air quality standards are different, which means statement three is of course wrong. The answer becomes A. One and two only, question number six. Now, this is again that question that you have to see and you have to understand and analyze here. Many species are unable to move to new areas, etc. Question is talking about the rising temperature. What will it do to its 
historical habitat okay so the global rates of species extinctions are likely to approach a or have exceeded the upper limit of absorbed natural rates of extinction okay this is true again this question is also linked with the concept of sixth mass extinction loss of biodiversity which is also characterized in the triple planetary crisis okay wherein you have climate change pollution and biodiversity loss combined so there is a global rate of species extinction which is going on likely to approach or exceed the natural limits of extinction absolutely true climate change will lead to decrease in the concentration of dissolved co2 in oceans now in oceans what is happening ocean acidification here overall carbon dioxide content is increasing it's not decreasing okay so this you can eliminate two is okay the question is asking what is not correct so of course the answer will become two only okay so you here in these type of questions you also have to look out for what is it exactly asking you all right so it's two only is not correct then the next question on kigali okay so here first of all it's asking you what is correct cfcs were first discontinued under kigali amendment so see what happened 1985 there was a vienna convention which spoke about ozone depleting substances 1987 we had montreal protocol okay so it was that in this montreal protocol which spoke about that these cfc chlorofluorocarbons which are ozone depleting substances they have to be discontinued okay so cfcs were first discontinued under kigali this is wrong of course right this is wrong because it is under montreal and in montreal what you had done you have discontinued cfc replaced them with hydrofluorocarbons this happened overall in the through the kigali okay like what happened in kigali kigali you talked about phasing out of hydrofluorocarbons okay so that is one then second statement elimination of hfcs could reduce global warming by 2 degrees by 2100 now this figure has been exaggerated it will not be as much it will be around 0.5 degrees so even 2 is wrong 3 under this kigali all the countries have agreed to a timeline to reduce the reuse of hfcs by roughly 85% of their baselines by 2045 true again one thing for you to notice is that kigali etc talks about reduction of the use of hydrofluorocarbons it does not talk about the elimination of hydrofluorocarbons okay so here only statement number 3 is correct all right okay next again this talks about the rising temperatures and what would this lead to it will have adverse impact on individual fresh water species community composition and water quality yes this is going to happen in the coastal areas it will exacerbate the water resource constraints due to increased salinization okay so i think statement 1 you would know statement 2 maybe if you don't know what does exacerbate means but still you can understand it talks about water resource constraints worsening why because of increased salinization okay so this also you can imagine let's say increasing temperatures will lead to the shrinking of water habitats etc and then more of the salinization more salt contents will be exposed so coastal communities will also be impacted right so more water constraints overall so here both the statements are correct the answer is 1 and 2 question number 9 okay now we are talking of question number 10 again a question on ozone okay previously we had seen a question on montreal as well as kigali now we'll see this question so surface ozone is a primary pollutant now pollutant are of two types one is primary one is secondary primary pollutants are directly emitted from a source and when the pollutants which are directly emitted when they combine with something else and then they form a secondary product that is a secondary pollutant okay so surface ozone here is basically a secondary pollutant so one is wrong okay ammonia and carbon dioxide do not cause ozone depletion this is also true these do not cause ozone depleting substances are different so this includes chlorofluorocarbons okay again hydro 
क्लोरो फ्लोरोकार्बन सो बेसिकली क्लोरिन रिलेटेड कंपाउंड ब्रोमीन रिलेटेड कंपाउंड हेलॉन्स ओके सॉल्वेंट्स एक्सेट्रा यूज इन फायर एक्सटिंग्विशर्स ओके सो दीज आर ओजोन डिप्रेटिंग सब्सटेंसेस राइट अमोनिया कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एक्सेट्रा दीज डू नॉट कॉज द डिप्लीशन ऑफ ओजोन ओके सो स्टेटमेंट टू इज करेक्ट ओके देन the okay i think uh, this option should have been better framed this should be this is not two and two only right a plant's ozone forming potential is de determined question number statement number number 3 by its ab ability to absorb atmospheric ozone no it is its ability to release okay release what release the volatile organic compounds into the atmosphere okay so it means see we are talking of plants ozone forming potential so a plant which has a high ozone forming potential will actually release a lot of volatile organic compounds that is the basic idea that we need to know okay so it's not the ability to absorb but the ability to release polar stratospheric clouds prevent the expansion of ozone hole okay now if you have read about ozone hole depletion etc and you followed the lectures you would know first of all this happens predominantly in antarctica region why because of abundance of polar stratospheric clouds so what happens when you have more of these clouds so these chlorine compounds etc they are safely present here this clouds act as a condensation nuclei so it does not prevent in fact it promotes the formation of ozone hole this is why the ozone depletion actually takes place okay so that is one thing so because this provides this surface on which this chlorine compounds can move all right so here because of all of this statement 4 is also wrong 3 is also wrong only statement number 2 is correct so this is a out and out conceptual question that you need to understand okay and then the last question here again a question on black carbon okay the question is asking you which of the following is incorrect please make sure you read this so what would black carbon do let's say this is a glacier let's say there is a black carbon okay so this will absorb a lot of heat so number one this will absorb heat okay which will lead to increased temperatures so the snow will now melt this is the basic idea here so and what is albedo albedo is reflectivity something which is going to reflect so with the black carbon reduce albedo or will it increase okay so number 1 reflectivity will be reduced so albedo is reduced here when it is deposited on snow and ice because yes it is going to absorb right the heat number 1 it is the strongest absorber of sunlight and it heats the air directly this is also true okay it disrupts cloudiness and monsoon rainfall and accelerates the melting of glaciers okay so even this part is true right all the three statements are true and because of that the answer will be none of the statements here is incorrect all right so let us quickly see what all we have seen so far we have seen the impacts on global warming okay rio plus 20 then arranging the greenhouse gases right agenda 21 question on climate forcings right national adaptation fund on climate change right what would happen to the species because of rising temperatures what is kigali agreement okay again rising temperature and the impact okay question again on ozone and its depletion overall it's a good conceptual question and the last question was on black carbon right again those of you who want to join the prelims crash course may do so okay the individually subjects also you can like get and you can also get all the subjects depending on how so ever you want to use it very comprehensive set of lectures along with the notes you will get all right so i hope this lecture was useful you gained more clarity on the topic number 7 which was climate change okay now i'll meet you in the next worksheet discussion all the very best please keep revising thank you